I start with a gestural idea. It's like uh, doodling. It's a simple way of saying it. And I start the same way in drawing on the canvas, uh, gesturally expressing shapes uh, the same way I do in the wax when I start for a bronze model. And I'm able to give it uh, life by the fact the wax, because it's like clay, I can give it uh, expression by modeling with my fingers and with warm tools. After I cast the piece in bronze, those maquettes are the ones that I, I make a series of about 10, let's say, and then out of the 10 models that I make up to six, seven inches tall, I will select a version from them for a larger sculpture to be fabricated. They can be all different sizes. There is no one size. Some pieces would not look good large, meaning 12 feet or above, and other pieces would look good. So you have to sort of, with your eye, uh, experience what it might look like if it's much, much larger, or if it's just a small piece, like three feet. You never know if it's going to be really as good as it, as it turns out. Usually the big ones turn out quite well. The sandblasting of the bronze sculpture is so we can remove the uh, patina that was on there that I put on there originally. In order to get the kind of color that I'm looking for, I had to remove the brown. And then we put acids on the surface to change the color. And the color I'm looking for is a black with a little bit of uh, blue-green specks coming through. And you put it on cold with a, a sponge or a cloth or whatever it is, and it's very easy to apply. And it turns it uh, however dark you want it, from brown to black. Then you wash it down and apply cupric nitrate, which is a acid for turning a turquoise blue green. And you use a torch, propane torch, to heat the metal, and then you we spray it on top of the heated area that uh, we want to turn green. And that's generally the, the way most of these uh, blue-green pieces are made. Now this one has to be moved. We have to move this, this piece so it runs this way. He's got such a reach. He sort of transcends any particular genre as, a, as an artist. Uh, I think he works beautifully both in three-dimensional and two-dimensional uh, work. Uh, and, and every piece he does has a story. There's a story there. It, it invites you in. It's very well balanced and it's, uh, it's so expertly crafted. You know, it's all made from sheets. So it's, it just looks beautiful. And really nice colors. The patina is very beautiful too. Very nice patinas. But they, are, they also, you know, speak something to me personally because I've been around his work my whole life. So, you know, I always look for some personal aspects of it, you know, see how he's doing by looking at what, what he's making. That's the nature of New York, is that the city is so vibrant and it has so many ups and downs, is about absor absorbing all of the action that is going on. It's a frenetic city, the most stimulating city I've ever experienced. Then you have s so much, you have to get out of there. And Santa Fe is sort of like being able to relax, digest, and reflect. This piece is bronze and stainless steel, and it's uh, related to the 
um, Twin Towers. When, my studio in New York is 10 blocks from the Twin Towers. And when, when the Twin Towers came down, the aftermath, I just was influenced by these big shapes, not any direct symbolism other than that this is a geometric shape that's to me was part of what the towers were. And then the, the organic shapes, bronze, are uh, the human aspect of uh, what occurred at the time. And it relates to uh, cubism because cubism is about destruction and then the rearranging of that destruction. So uh, that's what this is. And a lot of, and there's another one over there. This feeling that you have listening to music is the kind of thing I get when I look at really good art. It's something that is hard to put your finger on, but it's something you do feel. And you say, I, I really have to have that. I like that. I want to enjoy it. I want to experience it. I want to have it with me. It's, it's similar to having a great relationship with another person. Have a number of friends who are artists who, who stop working and then they say oh I'm having a hard time getting started again it's well it's like anything if you don't keep your, the, the juices flowing mm -hmm. uh, you do get get uh, hung up and so I usually am working all the time I never never really stop I think the longest vacation I've ever had is uh, two weeks I just I thoroughly enjoy being able to create work and, and work on it. It, it, is, it is my life. It, uh, it's something I never want to not do. I don't enjoy anything else as much as making art. It gets better over the years. Um, most of the work that I have placed outdoors around the country uh, the ones that are 10 years and older are better. They look really good. Just the way uh, Rodin sculptures were with the patinas. It's just they're wonderful patinas.